Okay, I'm just going to say it. I'm running out of intro. This week, many of you would have seen the beautiful sight of a lunar eclipse. Monday's super blood wolf moon was seen all over the world, and totally from the Americas and parts of North Africa and Western Europe. Because of the way sunlight is refracted round the Earth, the moon was still visible, and lit up a brilliant shade of red. In addition, the moon was closer than usual to Earth, making it appear larger and brighter, hence the super. I personally didn't really see any of the red moon, I was in bed, but did any of you? Let us know in the comments. In addition to the awesome sight, many have pointed out there was a flash during the night on the moon, and this was a meteorite strike. In other news, Antarctic krill, one of the Southern Ocean's most important food sources, and technically considered plankton, is moving south. This is almost certainly primarily because of changing temperature in the last couple of decades, and if this shift carries on, the ecosystem could face serious negative impact, as there are many other creatures that depend on krill to survive, like fur seals and macaroni penguins. In addition to the change in location for the bulk of the krill, it seems that on average, the krill are getting larger too. The study was published in the Nature Climate Change Journal, and focused on the Antarctic Peninsula and Scotia Sea. We've got quite a bit of shark news this week, as first of all, an absolutely massive great white shark has been spotted in waters around Hawaii. At almost 6 metres long and thought to be around 2.5 tonnes in weight, this huge female is possibly up to 50 years old, and could be the same individual that researchers tagged 20 years ago called Deep Blue. The shark seems to have been attracted to the carcass of a sperm whale that many tiger sharks were already feeding on, and apparently was using a boat belonging to divers to scratch herself on. Deep Blue may also be pregnant, which could explain why she seems so wide. But that's not it for sharks. Next up, a new species of prehistoric shark from the late Cretaceous of North America has been named after the video game Galaga. Galagodon was a pretty small animal, between 30 and 45 centimetres long, and was a relative of carpet sharks. Teeth belonging to the animal were discovered in the same place that the skeleton of Sue the T-Rex came from, and it's these teeth that are the reason for its name. Apparently they resemble the spaceships from Galaga, and so the paleontologists decided to name the animal after it because paleontologists are absolute nerds. There's also been some very exciting news from the world of early vertebrate research, as a fossil hagfish from the late Cretaceous has been described, seemingly ending the dispute of what hagfish actually are. There are two main ideas as to where hagfish fit in the tree of life. Either they are fish that have become very specialised, or they are so primitive that they aren't even vertebrates. By analysing this new fossil, which possessed various hagfish characteristics, meaning these features had already evolved millions of years ago, paleontologists have found evidence to support hagfish and the other jawless fish, lampreys, in a group together, as vertebrates that became highly specialised, meaning hagfish are not basal non-vertebrates. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. The Benji Thomas channel is back up and running now after a couple of weeks off, and thank you for your patience. If you'd like to and haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you, and if so, we'll see you on Sunday.